Holy long. Good morning. 
Welcome to Alamo Heights United Methodist Church. I'm so glad to see you all here on this beautiful Sunday morning. If you're visiting with us, an especially warm welcome to you. We want you to know you have a place among us here at Alamo Heights UMC. I have just one announcement before we continue our worship time this morning, and this is in your bulletin insert. But believe it or not, the holy season of Lent is nearly upon us, which is our 40-day preparation time before Easter. And that begins with Ash Wednesday. This year, we will have two opportunities to take part in the ritual of receiving ashes and offering prayers. We begin that sacred journey together. For the first time, this church will offer what we're calling ashes to go. I don't think you can get more convenient than that. 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. on Ash Wednesday, which is March the 2nd, we'll be out in the West parking lot. You can just drive through. We will impose ashes on you. We will pray with you, and we will help you begin that sacred journey. So if that appeals to you, we would love to see you then. Otherwise, we will worship together on Ash Wednesday, 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. So either way, I hope you will take time to mark the beginning of this holy season together. I have no other announcements, so I invite you now into a time of worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's worship together. Sometimes a light surprises a Christian while she sings. It is the Lord who rises with healing in his wings. For when comforts are declining, he grants the soul again. A season of clear shining cheer it after rain. In holy contemplation, we sweetly then pursue the theme of God's salvation and find it ever new. Set free from present sorrow, we cheerfully can say the unknown tomorrow bring with it what it may it can bring with it nothing but he will bear us through who gives the lilies clothing will clothe his people too and in the spreading heavens no creature but is fed and he who feeds the ravens will give his children bread though vine nor fig tree neither their wanted fruit should bear though all the fields should Flocks nor herds be there, yet God the same abiding, his praise shall tune my voice. For while in him confiding, I cannot but rejoice. I cannot but I invite you to stand in body or spirit, and together let us join in our call to worship. We gather together to worship God, who comes to us when we least expect it, who calls us out of the safety of our ordered lives, and invites us to join him in the adventure of faith. Let's worship God together. Indeed, let us raise our voices in song with our opening hymn, Maker in Whom We Believe.
Let us join together in our prayer printed in our bulletin that is a prayer in word and song. O oh Lord my God, teach my heart this day where and how to see you, where and how to find you. You have made me and remade me, and you have bestowed on me all the good things I possess, and still I do not know you. I have not yet done that for which I was made. Teach me to seek you. For I cannot seek you unless you teach me. Or find you unless you show yourself to me. Let me seek you in my desire. Let me desire you in my seeking. Let me find you by loving you. Let me love you when I find you. The more we know Christ, the more Christ's peace dwells within us, and then we can share it with those around us. In these moments here in the sanctuary, we invite you present to share Christ's peace with those that you greet, and those of you at home, perhaps you would like to send a text as we greet you with our peace as well. Indeed, the peace of Christ be with you all. Friends, I'm so glad that you're here today because today is a very special day in the life of our church. Of course, we're here to praise God and give God all the glory, but this is also a day that we recognize Chris Estes. Uh, Chris um, has gone through all of the, the exams, the classes to become a licensed local pastor. He's felt called to ministry, and he's been engaged in ministry for years here in recovery ministry. He is our director of recovery ministry here at Alano Heights UMC. 
But when Chris was actually appointed to our church in July of last year, he was busy away from us, and we couldn't take the time then to honor him as a new pastor appointed to our congregation. I hope that you read um, some of the information that the church provided, or perhaps you read an article provided by the conference. But Chris Estes spent uh, eight months of the last year on the Appalachian Trail. He was appointed there by the Holston Conference of the United Methodist Church as the chaplain to the people who travel that trail. He had an amazing experience. He offered the love of Jesus Christ in powerful ways to all kinds of people from all walks of life. We're so grateful for his ministry in that way, and you're going to hear more about that in a little bit as he offers the sermon this morning. But right now, we want to honor Chris Estes, who is now Reverend Chris Estes, otherwise known uh, on the trail as Bone Spur, <laughs> because he traveled over 2,000 miles on this journey. Will you come, Chris, at this time? And Reverend Donna Scrooge is going to join us as well. <laughs> Chris, on behalf of the church, I want to offer you this gift of a stole that represents the mantle of Christ that you wear as a pastor. Mm -hmm. How grateful we are that you honored and answered God's call in your life to serve as a pastor, especially here at Alamo Heights UMC. And we pray that you'll continue to live into that call. We know that you have so much love to give, and there are lives that will continue to be changed by your ministry. Friends, will you join Amen. with us now as we pray for Chris? Most loving God, we, we give you thanks that you continuously raise up among us people called to ministry in the life of your church. We're grateful, O oh God, that you have called Chris Estes. He brings a heart of kindness, inclusion, courage, and deep empathy for those struggling with addiction and those who continue on in recovery. Lord, we pray that you would continue to bless Chris in his ministry, give him strength, give him peace, give him endurance on the trail before him. And we thank you, O oh God, for the mighty ways in which this church, Alamo Heights UMC, lifts up and surrounds people called to ministry, equipping them and welcoming them into the pastoral office. May all Chris does in his ministry, O oh God continue to bless and glorify you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Will you welcome Reverend Chris Estes. This is indeed a joy, a joyous day of celebration uh, as we celebrate uh, Chris's uh, official move into ministry here at our church, and we are truly grateful for uh, his continuing ministry and, and the blessing that he is to all of us and to so many beyond these walls. So we do, do give great thanks to God for Chris. Uh, but in the midst of our celebration, we also recognize that there are those who have needs. And so I would share with you uh, the names of these who need prayers for healing, that you may hold them up before the Lord. John, Martha, Dorothy, Brian, Faye, Bayless, Kay, Bob, and Douglas. And I know that there are many more, and as we come into prayer together uh, in the moment of silence, I invite you to lift those who are on your heart before the Lord, and then kneel or bow as we pray together. O oh Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. It is with joy and thanksgiving for your grace and mercy and many blessings that we entrust these prayers to you, spoken and unspoken. Reveal to us how we can be a part of your answers and stir us 
to respond. Cover with your healing love those who are bodily sick and hurting, suffer from COVID, live with addictions, struggle with mental illness, carry pain in their souls. Where death and sorrow dwell, O God, send your comforting peace of Christ into broken and wounded hearts to give hope and new life. By your grace, help us see needs and respond with willing hands and hearts in the ways and places we can. We also pray peace and healing for our world where war threatens, injustice reigns, and hatred festers, and for all those who are affected by these evils. We pray for those who know of you but do not truly know the deep joy of life with you, for those who do not know you at all, and for those who are seeking you. As we meet them on the paths of life, may we see your presence flowing out from us with your all-encompassing love that they might be drawn closer to you. May we always put our trust in you rather than our own ideas and understanding, remembering that your ways are better than our ways. And so we lean on you to guide us in the way you would have us go. By your presence in our lives, let us reflect what is honorable, true, just, and pure to bring blessing to others in the name of Jesus. And so, loving God, we relinquish these prayers into your precious hands, all in the glorious name of Jesus Christ. And we pray the beautiful prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are so glad that you are here today, and we pray that you will take a moment and register your attendance with us. You can find our attendance pads in each pew at the end. If you'll pull those out, fill them out, and pass them down to your neighbor, we would be so grateful for that. And at this time, as our ushers and our acolytes move into place to receive our tithes and offerings, we remind you each week, it's such an important truth, that our, our gifts, our giving, is an act of worship. And when we give, we remember that God is the giver of every good gift. And when we give, we are reminded yet again that God comes first in our life. So we always urge one another to give generously. Now will you join with me in the offertory prayer that's printed in our worship bulletin. Lord, receive these offerings, our tangible expression of love and gratitude Transform them into a source of life for many, so that your kingdom may grow in the heart of all. In the name of Jesus, amen.
friends, now as we prepare our hearts to hear Holy Scripture, will you join with me in the prayer of preparation printed in your order of service? You alone, O Lord, hold the words of eternal life. Open us now to your holy wisdom, keeping before us the commandment you taught us to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. Amen. Amen. Hear now the word of God as it comes to us from the book of Proverbs in chapter 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Good morning, Elmo Heights. My name is Chris Estes. Hi, Chris. Yeah, that's why you like it that way. As you heard, my trail name is Bone Spur, but I have a fuller trail name. My full trail name is this, Bone Spur, the Chapalachian. As you heard, I spent the better part of the last year serving as the 2021 Appalachian Trail through hiker chaplain for the United Methodist Church. In light of that and my appointment here, for today, I shall be referred to as the Reverend Bone Spur, the Chapalachian. <laughs> this morning, I'd like to talk to you about the Appalachian Trail, the chaplaincy, and how trusting the Lord in all my ways and leaning not on my own understanding led me there. The Appalachian Trail, and by the way, since we're south of the Mason-Dixon line, that's how we say it, okay? Appalachian. You can let the Yankees in the north say Appalachian. That's okay. Or the ones in New Jersey and Long Island, they can say Appalachian if they want to, but we say it Appalachian. So let me hear you loud and proud. Appalachian. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. So the Appalachian Trail, or AT, is a 2,193.1 mile continuous footpath that traverses the Appalachian Mountains through 14 states in the eastern U.S. These states, going in the order in which I did them, and I'm not going to refer to my notes, I'm just going to remember, are West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Then flipping back south, again West Virginia, Virginia, Tennessee, North Carolina, and Georgia. All right? My friend Father Daniel's here. Was that 14? That was 14 states, right? Yeah, th thank you. Yeah, I did it without referring to my notes. How about that? So why did I list them in that order? Well, there's a variety of ways people hike the trail. The traditional route is northbound, or Nobo, from Springer Mountain, Georgia, northwest of Atlanta, to Mount Katahdin in north-central Maine. The mass, vast majority of hikers do it in that direction, starting in February or March and ending five to seven months later. Now, a smaller group of hikers do it southbound or Sobo, starting in Maine in June or July and then heading south to Georgia. Now, an even smaller group of very special through hikers, like Bone Spur the Chapalachian, do what is called the flip-flop through hike. Usually flip-floppers start in April or May in Harper's Ferry, near the midpoint of the trail, and head north for three to four months, then flip back down to Harper's Ferry and head south to Georgia for two to three months. My licensed local pastor school started in uh, early, uh, early May, so it made sense for me to do a flip-flop starting in late May. In addition to allowing me to finish the school, Doing the flip-flop allowed me to take advantage of ideal weather for most of the trip. I also experienced the fall colors in Maine in September and in the Shenandoahs of Virginia in October. No matter which way one travels, a successful through hike 
means walking every step of the trail in either direction within one year from the start. I accomplished just that last month on January 15th. No one is more surprised than me, trust me, no one. Now, while three million visitors uh, per year visit the trail, most are day hikers or section hikers. Each year, just 4,000 people complete the entire trail. Historically, only 20% do. Actually, each year, 4,000 people attempt the trail, and only 20% complete the journey. Now, since Earl Schaefer became the first successful thru-hiker in 1948, around 21,000 people have completed the trail. Interestingly, around 21,000 people have won Olympic medals all time. All right? So from now on, it's okay for you to think of me as an Olympian-like endurance athlete. That's all right. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll we I will wear that mantle. I will wear that. So, the Appalachian Trail Chaplaincy is an ongoing outreach ministry of the Holston Conference of the United Methodist Church. The Holston Conference includes Eastern Tennessee, Western North Carolina, Southwest Virginia, and North Georgia. Each year since 2013, the ministry has commissioned a chaplain to through-hike the AT and offer spiritual strength, comfort, and encouragement to fellow hikers. I was the ninth through-hiker chaplain. My job was to spread the life, spread the love of Jesus the Christ to whoever I came across. I considered it my mission to be a loving, listening, non-reactive presence with people on and off the trail. I also considered it a personal goal to talk to every single person I came across. I probably talked to over 1,500 people, maybe 2,000, much to the chagrin of my hiking partners. Kind of slowed them down a little bit. So how does a mild-mannered recovery minister and billboard salesman like myself become a chaplain and a successful thru-hiker of the Appalachian Trail? Well, trust me, it wasn't because I put my eye on the prize and worked towards it. Uh, no, I didn't dream that up, no. It happened because I learned to make myself available to trust the Lord in all my ways and lead not on my own understanding. So how, bone spur of the Chapalachian, do you do that exactly? Well, by asking, listening, and then acting. Asking God in prayer, listening with an open mind, and acting on what I heard by doing the next right thing. As many of you know, I am the pastor of recovery ministry here at the church. I've also been a sober member of an anonymous 12-step fellowship since 1999. There, I have had it drilled into me to first pray. That's ask. I have asked God to keep me sane and sober first thing in the morning every day for 22 years. And God has. In the summer of 2020, I completed the 485-mile Colorado Trail between Denver and Durango with my friend Greg here, in fact, also known as the Dear One. Wave, Greg. Yeah. Wondering where to hike next, I ask God in prayer, God, where do I hike next? In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> then I waited. Two months or so later, my 12-step sponsor, Dr. Bill B., called out of the blue. Now, in recovery, we have sponsors who are part mentors, part spiritual advisors, and part drill sergeants. Dr. Bill is all three. On the phone, Dr. Bill said, you know, Chris, you need to hike the Appalachian Trail and share good news with people on the East Coast. They need it. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'll, I'll get right on that. Goodbye. <laughs> Click. <laughs> Appalachian Trail, sure. The most difficult of the long trails. What about my business, my ministry? How do I do it physically, logistically, emotionally? about my marriage? Well, I filed that all into the no way department. <laughs> I'm not doing that. 
And a month or so later, I'm looking at Facebook, first thing in the morning, as you do, and saw the following announcement. Appalachian Trail Chaplaincy seeking applicants for 2021 through hiking chaplain with a link to the application. Really, God? I clicked the link and looked at the application. The first requirement was that the applicant have familiarity with recovery ministry. You're joking, right? <laughs> then I saw it was a Methodist ministry, and I met every other qualification. Okay, God, I'm listening. Now it's time to act. I did the next right thing. I asked my wife for permission. <laughs> then I applied. As I like to say, the chaplaincy board made a horrible mistake, and they picked me. <laughs> this started the journey of surrender I've been on since. From that point forward, it seems that God has put the right people in my path to make my path straight up and down the trail. In my business, Vanessa Ritchie, with 25 years' experience in my industry, showed up and partnered with my wife to make the business thrive. In my ministry, James L., a member of Laurel Heights United Methodist Church, and his wife Patricia, with 20 years recovery or more in Patricia's case, or Patrice's case, took over the Pioneer Group Recovery Ministry here and at Haven for Hope, and it thrived. This was a real gift to me. I've been tied to my business for 38 years and the ministry for 20. One day in Connecticut, I was sitting on a rock eating my lunch of dried figs from Costco and dried beef sausages from South Africa mm. and noticed some emails on my phone. I thought, not only do I not have to deal with anything on those emails, I don't even have to read them. Wow, this is what freedom's like. First time in 38 years. More, Lord, more. Well, how did that happen? By me reading another book about how to relax and prosper in business? No. By asking, listening, and acting. Trusting the Lord in all my ways and leaning not on my own understanding. Let me share some slices of life from the trail. First, What's with the name, Bonespur, the Chapalachian? Well, hikers usually adopt trail names while hiking the trail. They are often descriptive or humorous. Frequently, one of your hiking partners gives it to you. Fresh air is a hot air balloon photographer. I gave her that, I gave her that name. Carjack stole her towed car back from the impound after a Grateful Dead show. Somewhere gave herself her name because she didn't want a name like her friend, Snot Rocket. <laughs> Another way to get one is to do something stupid in front of people. Dirty Pasta spilled her Nor side dish into the dirt in front of a group of people and then ate it. <laughs> I became Bone Spur on the Colorado Trail because I have a bone spur in my right foot and I love the San Antonio Spurs. Can I get an amen? amen? Yeah. I gave myself the additional name, the Chapalachian, on the AT, because that was my role. So that leads me to what did life look like on the trail? The Appalachian Trail is very difficult. 2,193.1 miles is a long way. The terrain is frequently rocky, rooty, muddy, wet, slick, and steep. There are rarely any smooth, flat trails or sections. I often ask the question, is the trail a stream or is the stream the trail? It's hard to tell sometimes. Or is this vertical rock face the trail or is this vertical rock trace or is, no, the trail, the vertical rock trace. Boy, I didn't say that very good, did I? So we'll just ignore that for now. But the answer to all that was yes, yes. The trail was a stream sometimes. The stream was the trail sometimes. It seemed I was 
oh, oh here's, a, here's a hard learned lesson right here. I didn't fall every time I had my phone in my hand, but every time I had, every time I fell, I had my phone in my hand. <laughs> yeah, that's a hard, that's some hard one wisdom there. It seemed I was always ascending or descending. It seemed that way because I was. <laughs> Frequently, these climbs would lead to what we call pointless ups and downs. It can be disappointing to spend two hours on a 2,000-foot vertical ascent only to be enveloped in trees or clouds or both once you reach the top. The lesson I learned after experiencing this many times is this. There is always a view. You just need to know where to look. Sometimes the view is a spectacular 360-degree panorama of the White Mountains of New Hampshire with a moving fog and clouds and sunlight changing the view from moment to moment. Sometimes the view is of the seemingly endless peaks and lakes and ponds of Maine. And sometimes the view is just on the ground in front of you, a multicolored carpet of autumn leaves. There's always a view. You just need to know where to look. I experienced every type of weather, from stifling hot and humid in New York State in June to knee-deep snow in Georgia in January. From weeks of spectacular 70-degree sunshine to days of rain. July in Vermont brought Tropical Storm Elsa and more rain than the state had experienced in years. Vermont's nickname is Vermud in dry years. This year featured ankle-deep mud and shin-deep water for 100 miles. I experienced spectacular sunrises and sunsets, the sky red across the entire horizon. Lately, I've noticed that around here, too. If you go out back at the church, most any evening now, you can see the church silhouetted with a beautiful red sunset off in the distance. It's gorgeous. You see the quarry, the church, the sunset. It's just beautiful. On the trail, creation itself screamed of God's goodness and glory every day. If I was camping, I carried a lightweight tent, sleeping pad, quilt, a stove to boil water for coffee and to rehydrate meals, rain gear, extra clothes, first aid, toiletries, and other essentials. My base weight was around 20 pounds. Water and food could increase the weight to more than 30 pounds. The trail has more than 250 shelters and campsites available for hikers. These shelters are generally open, three-walled structures with a wooden floor. Shelters are usually spaced a day's hike or less apart, most often near a water source, and most importantly, with a privy. They generally have spaces for tent sites in the vicinity. There are often bear boxes, hanger poles, or pulley devices to keep our food away from critters, particularly rodents. Now, some people love camping. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> some people love sleeping on the ground or next to a snoring hiker in a shelter. They eat ramen and Skittles and Snicker bars and don't shower for four days. I'm not one of those people. I'll do it, but I don't love it. I did it. In fact, once in Maine, I camped for five days and four nights in a row. Generally, however, I tented or stayed in a shelter only when necessary. Fortunately, the AT provides plenty of opportunities to live more in the style I prefer. There are many hostels, motels, bed and breakfasts, huts and lodges available near the trail. I would spend between $20 and $90, nights, and $90 a night and enjoy a bed, shower, laundry, heat, air conditioning, breakfast, dinner, Netflix, rides to stores, Ben and Jerry's ice cream, and other essentials. I also spent a total of 20 nights at the, homes, at the homes of United Methodists who support the ministry. Overall, I spent 20% of my time camping and 20% sleeping indoors. Now about the ministry on the trail. 
I began each day on the trail with Father Michael's prayer. Father Michael Judge was the chaplain of the New York City Fire Department and tragically one of the first fatalities on 9-11-2001. He was also a 30-year sober member of Alcoholics Anonymous. In his pocket, he carried the following prayer. Lord, take me where you want me to go. Let me meet who you want me to meet. Tell me what you want me to say. And keep me out of your way. I prayed that every morning. After that, my job the rest of the day was to talk to people, listen, act, and stay out of God's way. Whoever I came across on the trail, in camp, or at the hostel, I would talk to. I would usually ask their name, introduce myself. Hi, I'm Bonespur, the Chapalachian. And I'd go from there. Being the Chapalachian would usually bring a laugh and inspire a question. People were genuinely interested and impressed that the United Methodist Church would send a chaplain out on the trail every year. I was impressed with the number of people of faith in general, and United Methodists in particular. Frequently, I would pray with people right on the trail. Now, another conversation starter were the patches I wore on the shoulder strap of my pack. Hopefully you can read that. The top one was for the chaplaincy, and the second one identified me as a friend of Bill W. Now, Bill W. is the founder of Alcoholics Anonymous. For people in recovery, that patch identified me as a person they could talk recovery with. This is particularly important for people like me. We have a saying, meeting makers make it. When I'm home, I go to a 12-step meeting nearly every day. Most people in recovery operate on a similar schedule. Spending eight months on a trail in the middle of rural America makes it difficult to attend many meetings. Although we were frequently in town, the towns are small and usually only have one meeting a week. If the meeting's on Friday and you're in town on Tuesday, you're out of luck. My Bill W. patch led to dozens of impromptu meetings on the trail, in camp, in the, hostel, in the hostels, in cabins on the top of mountains, in shelters, all over the place. So, in summary, trusting God in all my ways by asking, listening, and acting led to a very fruitful ministry experience for me and others. All I had to do was show up and get out of God's way. You can do the same. You don't have to be a superhuman, Olympian-like endurance athlete like Bonespur the Chapalachian. <laughs> Although that would help. No. You are the Chapalachian of your own trail, your street, your neighborhood, your school, your family, your church, your workplace. By trusting the Lord in all your ways and leaning not on your own understanding, you can be the loving, listening, non-reactive presence that this world needs. Just ask. First pray. Listen with an open mind. Really? Act. Starting with the first thing, the first step, the first word, the first phone call. Do the next right thing. Your Appalachian Trail is the path right in front of you. Let's pray. We'll pray that same prayer of Father Michael. Lord, take us where you want us to go. Let us meet who you want us to meet. Tell us what to say and keep us out of the way. In Jesus' name, 
And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Friends, our invitation to Christian discipleship this week is to pray, to listen to God, and then to act, to do the next right thing. The invitation is also made. If you'd like to join our church, I invite you to come forward as we sing our final hymn together. It's in the faith we sing, number 2190, Bring Forth the Kingdom. Will you stand as you are able and let's sing. Salt for the earth, O oh people, salt for the kingdom of God. Share the flavor of life, O oh people, life in the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy, bring forth the kingdom of peace, bring forth the kingdom of justice. Receive this blessing. May your eyes be filled with wonders. May your hearts be full of joy. And may your footsteps be firm as you walk with God. Amen. Amen. Have a great week.